Hi guys, welcome to the channel. In this video, I would like to share findings related to the breakout setup after a deep dive on stocks that didn't have a breakout. I will also share some observations on the data, but also um, some thoughts on should you do such a deep dive or not. There are more than 125 slides ahead, that's why I'll keep a good pace during the presentation, but you pause and review the slides in more details whenever needed. Here are the open questions and how this particular presentation is structured. How many setups that failed were identified? What was one of the main observations of the deep dive? What causes a setup to fail? In which of the 30 minute timeframes are breakdowns more likely to happen? How much volume is present in the breakdown area? What is the level of correlation with SPY? Breakout map 2.0, adding breakdowns, a very interesting part of the presentation. I highly advise you not miss these parts. What is the ADR in the breakouts and breakdowns data set? And where can I get edge when trading breakouts? A lot of topics to cover, a lot of interesting information, so let's go. Here's the first one. How many setups that failed were identified? In the initial deep dive, I was looking for breakouts and the total of 963 stocks were identified. However, while doing the deep dive, I could see situations when a setup did happen. There was a first leg and then a consolidation sideways but there was no breakouts. And I was curious to see how many situations like these are out there and why this is happening. That's why I initiated this second deep dive where I was looking for the setups that failed with the assumption that understanding why they fail could help better predict and be in the stocks and read the stocks that are about to break out. I was looking for setups that look like this, and here are the results. A total of 615 breakdowns were identified, a pretty high number, I would say. Uh, later in the presentation, I'll compare the breakouts and breakdowns on uh, different parameters. As a result, this, the, what you see on the left is referred to the breakout, what you see on the right is referred to as breakdowns. And when we discuss about the setup, the setup refers to the first leg upwards and then the consolidation. The deep dive was done on the same stock selection as the breakout deep dive and included the same time period. A total of 2,578 stocks were reviewed. As with the breakouts, no biotech and no ETFs were included and a timeline of January 2017 to December 2022. For more details on the breakout setup, I highly advise you to watch these videos available on the channel. What were the criteria for selection and what all the 615 breakdowns in the da data set have in common? A first leg of 12% momentum or higher, a sideways move of at least six days, and then to have a breakdown traded volume in the considered like breakdown day of more than 100k shares. Please have in mind that the study is biased. There is a selection bias. The study looked at setups that had a sharp move up or a sharp move downwards and did not consider setups that had a more sideways move. And in addition to this, there is a researcher bias, meaning that some of the setups I selected you will not consider good setups. And in addition to this, there is also the researcher experience level. So uh, I'm a beginner and the chances of me doing wrong claims or wrong analysis is much higher. So have this in mind as well. That's why have in mind the statistical data could be more accurate. Don't take the numbers for granted, rather look at what the big data patterns suggest. Okay, now that some elements about data are covered, here's the next topic. What was one of the main observations of the deep dive and a key learning point? When you study the setups with the breakouts, you study the setups with additional momentum. The market was ready to pay more and the stock moved up. And when you do the deep dive and you look for those breakouts in the historical charts, you look again and again and you find those breakouts with additional momentum. In a sense, you see strength. This can create a perception that all or most of the tickers that set up are more likely to break out. You may think that the goal itself is to find the setup as the move upwards is secured. 
Well, when I did the deep dive to look for those setups that did not break out, this is what happened. So when you study the setups that did not break out, you study the setups that did not benefit from additional momentum. The market was not ready to pay more. The stock continued sideways or faded and shifted in a downtrend move. Looking at historical charts, you see this downtrend, you see the setup and the downtrend move again and again. And what I could see is the weakness. You see weakness sometimes even in consolidation phase. Well, this understanding that the setup could show strength and could show weakness even in consolidation phase came up together after doing both the breakouts and breakdown deep dive. And to me, is a very important uh, element on how to better trade the breakout setup. Then I took all these breakouts and breakdowns and tried to see what is the repartition per year. And here are the results. A pattern suggested by the data is that the years that have more breakouts are also the years that have more breakdowns. In a sense, the setup is created when there is more momentum on the market. We know that 2020 and 2021 were years with a very high liquidity and momentum on the market. It's a very basic and logic conclusion, but now there is also some data to prove this. More momentum creates more setups and some of them break out and some of them break down. Let's go into a couple of examples. So we see here a setup that is surfing nicely, the 10 days moving average, a sign of strength, and then breakout. So a setup with strength. Here's another example, also nice surfing, and then a breakout. Another situation with a longer consolidation, nice surfing of the 20 days moving average, also some sign of strength and later breakout. Then here is a situation that to me is a setup with the first leg, then a consolidation area with showing some weakness here and then some weakness later. Here is another situation which to me is a setup, weakness here and weakness later. Here is another setup with a lot of weakness in one day and then continuous weakness moving forward. Reviewing both breakouts and breakdowns again and again led me to this conclusion. The setup can continue with strength and with weakness. In the consolidation phase, the setup is showing the elements of strength and weakness between the support and resistance line. Diagnosing strength and weakness in the setup is an edge. This dynamic between strength and weakness is very similar to football or to any situation where two teams compete against each other and in our case it's a competition between bulls and the bears. The example is a bit weird but give it a chance it will help me bring a point. In football things may look random but actually in the upper part of the field there is the line of offense and when it comes to the setup on the upper part is the resistance line or what I call the front line. In the um, lower part of the field there is the line of defense and the setup in the lower part has the support line. Well, a team pressing an attack for a long time is perceived as showing strength and is considered more likely to win when most of the team is in the upper part of the field. For setup is similar, a setup that has price action close to resistance is a setup that displays strength. If it presses in that area for a longer period of time, then it's more likely to break out. And the other way around, a team defending itself, so a team located in the lower part of the field, uh, for an extended period is perceived as showing weakness and is considered more likely to lose. A setup that has price action close to support is a setup that displays weakness or signs that the bulls are taking a breath. If it will not show additional momentum, the setup is more likely to break down. Well, when you trade breakouts, you take the position of a forwarder. Forwarders engage in the game in particular areas of the field at the front. They do not usually engage in defense and have a lower presence at the midfield. When it comes to breakout, data suggests the same logic is applicable. Do not enter when the stock is in defense. Engage in some cases at the midfield, which is an anticipation play experience needed, and have an active action when the stock shows strength and passes the resistance front line.
Well, there's a big disclaimer though. In football, the team that attacks the most doesn't always win and neither does the team that has the highest possession of the ball. As in football, the setup that shows a high amount of strength doesn't always break out and neither does the setup that has the initiative for a longer period of time. Okay, let's go back to charts and a couple of examples. So what you see here now on the screen is a ticker that had a breakout. The data is presented within the 30 minute time frame intraday data with the white areas being the active trading hours, gray areas being the after hours. And we see a ticker that had a nice breakout. If trying to diagnose did this ticker showed strength or weakness during consolidation, it's a little bit difficult to do, but as soon as I try to add the resistance line and the main support line, and then one extra blue line that represents sort of the middle of the field, then it's much easier to make sense of the price action. So we see in this area, the bulls taking a breath and some signs of weakness, but then strength, strength, offensive, 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 and a nice breakout later. Here's another example with the breakouts. And when looking at intraday data, what we could see is some weakness here, but then some strength and attempt to break out. So offensive play, uh, still strength, uh, offensive, and then breakout. Another example with a longer consolidation. So we see strength of the setup, moderate play, weakness of the setup, moderate strength, still a lot of strength in the second half of consolidation and then breakout. And then look, let's look at a couple of examples where we see a breakdown and how the weakness usually plays. So we see weakness here and an attempt to um, attack, but didn't work out. So weakness, 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 and a, a last push and then further weakness down. Another example of a breakdown, again, you can read here right away weakness of the setup and then it goes into strength. So you see how these dynamics of strength and weakness, very similar to a football game passing back and forward. Uh, but then here we have strength and the setup shows weakness end of the day, then uh, starts the day with weakness and continues forward with a breakdown. One more setup, a nice area of strength for a while, but then attempting and showing weakness in the second half of the day and attempt moderates uh, weakness, weakness, weakness in the second half of the day, weakness in the second half of the day and uh, breaking down. Uh, so the defense lost their positions. In the previous video, a high importance was given to the resistance line as it's very important to the breakout setup. However, studying weakness, it was clear and evident that the support line also plays a very major role in keeping the setup together. So it leads to the conclusion that both structural lines are equally important to the nature of the setup. This is one of the main conclusions to summarize this part of the video, understanding and becoming aware that the setup can show strength and weakness and starting to perceive these dynamics proactively through the football field model is an important element learned while studying the setups that failed. And now after doing both deep dives, the strength and weakness elements came together and I could see them in play. Uh, when doing your deep dive, do this exercise, highlight the support and resistance of the setup, review its strength and weakness areas, identify the breakout candle. This will help you much better learn and understand and progress in reading the setup. Well, here's the next question. What causes a setup to fail? In 2.9% of the cases, it was considered as an unexpected news catalyst. Then in 10.9% of the cases, the stock started to break down a day after or in the day of an earning call. That's why it was considered as that was the main cause of failure. And association doesn't mean causation, but that's how I assigned it. And then in 33.2% of the cases, stock moment, it was a stock momentum loss. And in 53% of the cases, it was considered that the market had a pressure on the individual ticker and it forced it to break down. The stock momentum loss and market pressure parts 
are very subjective. I did them from my side based on reading the charts. Uh, however, don't take the numbers for granted. Look at the bigger patterns of the data. Let's look at a couple of examples. So unexpected negative news catalysts. Here's an example with a stock CareDX that, sh that plunges after a competitor showed some good results in a trial. Here is another example with a good setup, nice consolidation, but then uh, there was some uh, serious concerns on the planned merger. It didn't go through. As a result, the stock plunged uh, right after the news. And here is another example where the stocks create a setup, shows some strikes, even breaks out. But then there is an announcement of 10 million share secondary shares offering, and there is a big gap down. Here's another example where we have a nice first leg, good consolidation, a nice sli sliding on the 10 days moving average. But then we get the news that a company that wanted to acquire DXC walked away. And based on that, the stock breaks down. A conclusion here, negative news catalysts don't happen often, but can create a significant shift in momentum and major losses if not managed correctly. Here's the next cause of failure earning calls. A total of 10.9% of situations when a setup break down a day after or in the day of earning call announcements. A pretty high number of situations and we'll see in the examples it's very impactful. A study was done for the breakouts as well and what we see is a total of 5.7 of breakouts, 52 out of 963 moved upwards after an earning call and 10.9 or 67 out of 615 moved downwards after an earning call still a higher number of breakdowns and the earning calls can, may have a way more negative uh, impact on the setup than a positive impact let's look at a couple of examples so here we see a first leg then a little bit of a choppy wavy consolidation but then look at the earning call at and what a gap next another one nice momentum choppy but then it break out a couple of days later earning calls done nice first leg uh, tight consolidation then earnings and a breakdown uh, another setup significant gap down another example long momentum consolidation earnings giving back all the gains. Another one with a higher gap after earnings, another significant momentum uh, sliding and a sideway move and then earning calls and what's a big uh, loss of momentum and uh, significant losses to the account, if not managed well, another example of uh, damage to the setup and to the account. Another example, earning calls, damage. So what we saw, earning calls can be damage, damage, damage. Entering the setup a few days ahead of earnings can be a very bad idea. And I gave an additional number of examples so that you see how bad the impact of earnings can be on a setup. The next cause of failure, stock momentum loss. In 33.2% of the cases, we will look at a couple of examples. Stock momentum loss was assigned to a ticker when we see the markets, the overall market in an uptrend, but the stock still loses momentum and the price continues to move downwards. Let's go uh, look at a couple of examples. So what we see here on the right is SPY. We see a move upwards, stock continues downwards, a sideway and still an upward move, the stock downwards, uh, a bit of correction, upward move, uh, major uh, move downwards, uh, upward move, uh, the individual ticker loses momentum. So it's a momentum loss goes downward, upward momentum on SPY, momentum loss on the individual ticker, upward momentum, nice first leg sideways consolidation, but then loss of momentum. A bit of correction here, market pretty choppy, but still upward. And uh, let's see that individual ticker loss of momentum, upward major loss of momentum. Uh, upwards it's a loss of momentum 
a bit of upward sideways, but then the ticker again upward. Uh, that leads to the conclusion in some situations, even if the stock shows good initial momentum in the first leg, the market will not be ready to pay more for whatever reason, and the individual ticker will lose momentum even if the overall market continues to move up. And here is the last cause of a setup to fail. Market pressure assigned in 53% of the cases the majority of situation when a setup is breaking down is because there is a correction on SPY. Let's look at a couple of examples. Here is the SPY on the right and we see it goes through a correction and the setup is breaking as well. A correction, the setup doesn't keep under the pressure of the market. Here is a correction ahead and the setup is anticipating sort of the correction and also breaks down. Another setup in the same couple of days uh, ahead of the correction, it's also breaking down. Correction, breaking down, correction, breaking down. A smaller correction, but also we see on the setup breaking down. Here, an example where the correction happened, the setup hold for a longer period of time, but then <clears throat> Under the pressure of the market, it also goes in a breakdown. A small correction, the setup in a small correction. Um, a small correction here, a tiny correction here. We see how the individual ticker is following the market trend. The um, April of 22, uh, we have a market correction also happening on the ticker, the same losing momentum. A market correction, a ticker that lost a lot of its value. Overall, the market has a major impact on the performance of the setup and a good coordination between what the individual ticker strength and weakness looks like and the overall market performance is always needed when trading the breakout setup. Here it is again, the slide with the full list of causes of failure. I hope all those examples that were shared convinced you that a good process and a good risk management should be in place to trade the setup well and to protect your capital. I will end this part of the presentation with a quote from Christian, stop loss is your best friend. The next topic we'll look into is in which of the 30 minute time frames are breakdowns more likely to happen. A similar study was done for the breakout setup as well. A day has a total of 13 30 minute time frames. And what I was looking for is to see in which particular 30 minute candle the breakdown is happening. And in this case, I also considered it structural candle. Of course, I wanted to give it a name. And because it's the moment when all this uh, flow is going downwards, I gave it a name, the waterfall candle, the 30 minute candle, in which an entry with the stop at the candle's low will maintain you in the position and represents the entry with the lowest risk. Here are the results, very similar, surprisingly similar to what uh, the breakouts data was. 58% of breakdowns happen within the first hour of the trading day, 79% before 12 p.m. And if adding them side by side, the breakouts in green and the breakdowns in red, per time frame, we see that the price action is quite similar, even if in opposite direction and at different locations. I will let you pause and review the data in more details. But yeah, this led me to another conclusion. A similar behavior at support and resistance can suggest that both structural lines are equally important to the nature of this particular setup. The conclusion, very similar price action in opposite direction in the 30 minute time frames for both the breakouts and breakdowns setup. A short wrap up and some key ideas that were covered so far. 
First, we looked into a way to diagnose strength and weakness through that football field model. Then we also covered the support and the resistance lines and how important they are to the structure of the setup. And we looked into the causes of failure and examples that prove that it's very important to have a very good quality risk management. The presentation you are watching now, plus three more, in addition to the data set with breakouts and breakdowns, daily and intraday data with side-by-side -side comparison with Pi and an Excel file with measurements, plus the breakout map and an exercise with 100 breakouts and 100 breakdowns with intraday data so that you are able to identify the structural elements and practice strength and weakness. All this content is available for download on the link in the description. Thank you to everyone that downloaded. You made this video possible and thank you for support. Let's move on to the next question. What is the level of correlation with Pi? To study the correlation, a side-by-side -side comparison between the price action of the individual ticker, which is displayed on the left, was performed on the daily chart with what the overall market or SPY did within the next 7 to 10 days after the breakdown happened. In this case, the market moved in an upside trend. In this case, we see the breakdown happened and in this period, the market was in a sideways trend. And here is an example when a breakdown is happening and after the, the market is already in a correction, but then after the breakdown day, it also continued moving downwards. And here are the results. A similar study was done for the breakouts and we see a very big majority of cases SPY is moving upwards in the next uh, 7 to 10 days after the breakout happened. When doing a similar analysis for the breakdowns, here it is, the uh, situation is changing. The breakdowns happen in a majority of cases when SPY is in a downtrend move. A bullish environment is more favorable for the breakouts to succeed and a bearish environment is more favorable for breakdowns. It's uh, common sense, but now I also have this context awareness and how important is the price action within the 7 to 10 days periods after a breakout or a breakdown is happening. And the more general conclusion, the market has a major impact on the performance of the setup. In addition to this, I looked if the 10 days moving average is above 20 days moving average on SPY when the breakouts or breakdowns are happening. Here are the results in 80% of cases when the breakouts happen, uh, 10 days MA is above 20 MA, but uh, when breakdowns are happening, the 10 days is above 20 days moving average in 76% of the cases. This was surprising and a bit unexpected. Both the breakouts and the breakdowns are more likely to happen in the bullish market environment when 10 days is above 20 days moving average. I wanted to step back and see how many breakouts and breakdowns happen per month within this six years time period that was studied. And what you see on the upper part, the breakouts and the lower part, breakdowns, so many and happening often. Overall, this is a good learning point for trading breakouts. The study was still intended to understand how to better uh, trade the breakouts. There is a breakout setup noise that must be risk managed correctly in order to be profitable on the long run. There are always a setup as we see across the years when and situation when setups are forming, but for whatever the cause, they lose momentum, they don't break out. But these particular situations are the uh, risky situations when you can encounter losses. In addition, I tried to plug on top of the charts areas and months when the market was in a correction. We see here a correction, almost no breakouts, but still some breakdowns. 
no breakouts at all, some breakdowns, no breakouts, some breakdowns, and then the bear market of 2022 spikes in breakouts, in breakdowns, it is important to have a balanced approach and good understanding of the market context to correctly evaluate what market you're going through and what outcomes are more likely to happen. Something to highlight about 2022 bear market and an observation on breakouts and breakdowns, considering this was a year highly impacted by energy sector geopolitical situation and there was a major context to it. If we remove the energy sector breakouts and breakdowns, then what we see is that in 2022, we decreased down to 96 breakouts and 95 breakdowns, it's a similar number more or less to what happened in 2018. So definitely not the best favorable year to trade the breakout setup. And here's the next topic, the breakouts map 2.0 adding breakdowns. First, here are some details on how to read the chart. So what you see is the SPY chart. One chart means one year of data. In this case, it's breakouts map and breakdowns map for 2017. The moving averages are the 10, 20, 50, and 100 days moving averages. Every time you see an arrow up, that's a breakout. Every time you see an arrow down, that's a breakdown a day. It's the day when the breakdown started. Every time you see an arrow up with a dot on top, that's breakout that happened the day after or in the day when an earning call was. So an association with an earning call trigger or catalyst could be in place. And the same is applicable for the breakdown setup. Color coding is displayed on the bottom of the chart. I advise you to pause and review the chart in details. For 2017, a comment to highlight breakouts and breakdowns happen in clusters within sectors. As we see in this case, technology, technology, energy here. Breakouts come in cluster of breakouts as we see here, 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 here and breakdowns come in clusters of breakdowns as we see here and here. Here is the breakouts and breakdowns map for 2018. What I highlighted here was first in periods of major market corrections, there are no breakouts and neither many breakdowns, most likely because the individual tickers cannot create the first leg of the setup. The next elements I highlighted, the market corrections cause failure of the setup and represent a good opportunity to enter the setup on the short side. We see a market correction here and a lot of breakdowns. We see a market correction here, breakdown, many breakdowns, many breakdowns as well. Here's the map of 2019. I let you pause and review the charts. Here are the comments I highlighted on this one. First, a high number of breakdowns happen even when 10MA is above 20MA. Some tickers or sectors are losing momentum even in an overall strong market environment. This chart shows very well that from the beginning of the year till the end of the year, we see the 10 days moving average above 20 almost most of the time here and um, here and even so in this period highlighted very well here 10 days is above 20 days moving average and we see how many breakdowns happened a lot of them also happening because of some news after earning calls but they do happen in addition to this this chart is highlighting very well that a sharp bullish candle on spire with further further upwards momentum generates many breakouts. We can see a sharp bullish candle here. We can see a sharp bullish candle here and one highlighted here. Following this, we see a lot of breakouts here, a lot of breakouts here and a lot of breakouts here. And the same is applicable on the bearish side. A sharp bearish candle on SPY with further downward momentum generates many breakdowns. We can see that here with breakdowns following 
we can see that here with many breakdowns following also some of them having the earnings day in the same day another sharp candle bearish candle on spy and a lot of breakdowns created the breakouts and breakdowns map of 2020 what a crazy year especially here in the second half of the year here is what i highlighted there are periods when there are way more breakouts and periods when there are way more breakdowns understanding how to position yourself can be an edge spy can give good suggestion on what setup is more likely the end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021 was just crazy also a big amount of breakdowns happening here is what i highlighted for this chart there are areas with breakout traps situation when after a good series of breakouts many setups are forming but they break down these areas can generate big losses where we can see that we see here a lot of breakouts but then followed by breakdowns a lot of breakouts followed by breakdowns a lot of breakouts and then changing sentiments the market still goes upwards but there is a lot of setups that do break down a lot of breakouts and followed by some breakdowns in addition many setups form due to a good market momentum in this area we see spy moving up a lot of setups created the first leg went into a consolidation but then they failed as soon as earnings calls happened and an unusually high number of breakdowns happening in this example in 2021 here is the last chart in the group of breakouts and breakdowns map it's the year of 2022 here are the comments that I highlighted on my side. Breakouts and breakdown setup gave many opportunities during the 2022 bear market. Breakdowns happen a few days before the 10 MA crosses the 20 MA on the downside. And when we see a well defined downside trend and correction from SPY and from the overall market, we can see that as a good example here across on the downside and then uh, markets moving downwards and a lot of breakdowns here another example when we see a reverse a lot of breakdowns happening here another change of trend a lot of breakdowns happening and here as well a lot of breakdowns happen so that was it in terms of charts and looking at all these six years of charts with breakouts and breakdowns and stepping back as a general conclusion there are many setups that fail without good knowledge and process in place you can lose all the money you have and all the money you can borrow an analysis to the ADR was done on the historical charts in the data set for both breakouts and breakdowns the formula for ADR can be also found on Christian's blog for both TC2000 and TradingView. Because I was working with TradingView this time, it was very convenient to add it as an indicator on the chart. It is this yellow line on top. And uh, in the moment when it crosses, uh, the daily uh, dotted line crosses the ADR, it's this number on the chart. Here are the results in the data set 359 stocks or 37.3 percent of the total have an adr below four percent this is a good and bad news in the same time additional study is needed what is for sure is that christian advises to trade setups with an adr of 4.5 to five percent or higher on my side the data set had a lot of tickers with an adr below four percent here are a couple of examples here is a setup with 2.16 adr here is another breakout with 164 adr here is another example of with a setup that looks okay but it has a 2.36 adr additional study is needed and when i put the breakouts and breakdowns adr on the same chart here are the results looks like the four percent mark is like a silver line all that happens below four percent in that area the setups 
with the low ADR are more likely to break down. And when we cross 4% at the beginning, it's kind of equal, but later setups with the higher ADR are more likely to break out. What data suggests about the character and skills needed for the breakout setup after looking at so many breakdowns? Well, looking at failing setup is like looking at many car crashes. There are many situations when things go totally wrong. You'd understand that you must drive with responsibility, balance, maturity, and awareness. Good knowledge and process should be in place if you want to make it on the long run. Taking these qualities and plugging them on that football field thing, and depending on the area where the setup is at the moment, then you need to display different qualities and character at that particular time. For example, you have to be more grounded, balanced, patient, constantly diagnosing and aware of individual stocks and market dynamics when the consolidation is happening and the stock shows moderate actions, but then as soon as the stock is starting to show more strength approaching the line of resistance, then it's expected to be more decisive. There should be that sense of don't give up and trader has to display sharpness and quickness in action. The same is the case when there is an attempt to trade the breakdown. Where can I get edge when trading breakouts? In the previous video, these were the key qualities and elements highlighted in order to get edge. So recognize the setup, entry at liftoff, a good understanding on the market context, trading character and skills. Well, after seeing so many failures and setups that did not break out, here is how the new breakout Kalamagi style edge graph looks like, recognize and diagnose the setup is by far the biggest change. Recognizing the setup is in a sense easy after a while. It's way more difficult to constantly be able to diagnose correctly the strength and weakness of the setup, to watch for these dynamics and plan your actions in the future. More importance has to be added to this element of correctly diagnosing the setup. Entry at lift off candle remains. Market context proved again as being very important. Trading character and skills added more balance, maturity, awareness, and seeing that things can go very well in a lot of cases and things can go totally wrong in many cases. Here's a new attempt to create the breakouts Kalamagi style setup overview. It's still work in progress. Well, what we have is a setup. The first leg is created on average between three to seven days and has a first leg of 12% momentum or higher. Then the stock started to go in a sideways move of consolidation between seven to 12 days. In this time, there is a major resistance line at the top, which is I called front line, and a similar in importance support line. Then the setup goes in a consolidation and dynamic between strength and weakness that can be read similar to a football game. And if the strength is high, the market is favorable, then most likely the setup will break out in the first one hour of the day or before 12 p.m. If not, the setup shows weakness and if the market is unfavorable, the setup will most likely break down with a start through a waterfall candle uh, that happens within 58% of the cases within the first one hour of the day, 79% of the cases before 12 p.m. A very high uh, importance is to not enter the setup before earnings because they represent the biggest cause of major failure of the setup. And in terms of volume, the breakout happens with higher volume on the daily and uh, intraday 30 minute chart with the um, breakdowns having a more step-by-step -step fading activity.
Well, that was it. I hope you liked the deep dive. Coming soon, breakouts, killer market style in biotech. This sector was kept on the sides due to its reputation, but now what will be in focus? Uh, the main question to be answered, is this industry any different? Should I trade breakouts in the industry? We'll look at both breakouts and breakdowns to see if there is something to be worried about. Give it a like on YouTube, subscribe, and make sure to retweet it on Twitter. This helped me super much. Thank you. Best of luck. Peace.